So the first major DLC for Dying Light 2 has just been leaked. Allegedly. Normally when it comes to DLC videos or information coming to any type of major game, I always recommend taking that with a giant grain of salt. Take it in stride. Unless it's coming from the direct source, in this case being Teclan, then at best it's fun to speculate and visualize of what could be and at worst it's just clickbait bullshit. For this video I'll let you decide what it is. Now, I will leave my source down in the description in case you guys want to check it out. The data miner, which is where all this information is coming from, someone actually data mined the game as, I guess, the DLC has been updated into the game as of the latest patch at least the basic foundation you know basic audio files at the very least with some animations and actual models missing the textures which is not uncommon the developers nowadays always slowly start feeding game files preparing for a giant update whether it be dlc a major event or just future support for something that's going to be added to the game in the future with the dlc for dying light 2 set to release in about two months there's quite a bit that can definitely change although it does look like this dlc is pretty far development and considering the dlc was originally set to release in June and delayed two months, it does make sense for this to potentially be it. But either way, as of right now, the DLC is named or codenamed Opera and it is gladiator themed. As of right now, it is complete with over 2,000 voice lines and potentially two endings, with a player needing to participate in arena challenges to advance their rankings and progression in the game's story, which personally sounds very similar to how the progression of the following DLC took place, with you having to do things for the Alkalites and slowly being trusted for you to finally meet the mother. It also looks like the challenges that are going to be introduced into this DLC are both parkour and combat related with the data miner giving an example of you having to collect some flags inside an arena that's filled with infected and you're completely unarmed. This DLC is also going to be introducing shields which I found interesting because shields were actually in the original Dying Light. I personally never used them all that much if I remember correctly you can make them elemental making them electric or even ice related so seeing something like that back inside Dying Light 2 would be not only be really cool but introduce a little bit of diversity into this game's combat and Dying Light 2 you can dual wield, you couldn't do that in the original game. With this whole DLC being gladiator themed, it'd be really neat to be able to have an electrified shield with an axe or some type of single handed weapon in your right hand. But along with shields being introduced, as you progress through the DLC's main story, then you'll gain access to better weapons and upgrades. There's even a line that describes you being introduced to the best craft masters in town, which of course means more vendors and, as previously stated, more upgrades and more weapons. With Teclan wanting to go the whole modern age media evil theme with the main story and main theme of Dying Light and with this DLC being gladiator themed it'd be really cool to see them kind of blend that vision together in terms of the weaponry that we start to see. I would love to see them get much more creative and visceral with these types of weapons like a crossbow that fires an arrow and upon impact that explodes into a thousand splinters that at the very least staggers the infected or other humans that are close to that initial arrow that exploded. Anyways the main event of this DLC takes place inside an opera house which is considered to be the largest battle arena in town. Now it sounds like another faction is also going to be introduced. These faction of gladiators kind of leaves me to wonder where the peacekeepers and survivors and renegades play into this role. Potentially this opera house could also be outside of Illidor. Maybe the story takes place after the events of Dying Light 2 and similar to the events of the following DLC where Crane ventured outside the walls of Haran. Aiden decides to venture outside the walls of Illidor and these are how these new characters are introduced. What the motive is and why he's venturing outside the city, who really knows? I'm just kind of curious of how it's all going to be blended together. But we also have four main characters that were shared. We have Astrid, the leader of the Opera House and potentially the main leader of these gladiators. Skullface, who's the strongest gladiator in the Opera, considered Astrid's left-hand man. And you have Ogar, former Opera champion. Astrid turned against him and they became enemies. At the start of the video, the data miner, it looks like the interaction between Ogar and Aiden is kind of alluring to the fact that Ogar potentially could be Aiden's main ally in all this and how he makes it to the main Opera House. And then we have Ciro, Ogar's stepson who wants to become an opera champion. It sounds like Ciro's a close friend of Aiden and is actually going to play a similar role to that of Hakon. Considering this DLC potentially has two endings, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out with Ciro and because, you know, you can't kill Hakon in the main story, would this be one of those situations where Ciro becomes friend or foe and that's the main way that this DLC ends? The last thing I want to touch on was kind of the most interesting bits. So with the main opera house, the main opera Astrid being the main place and the main stage of the final event, there are 
other smaller arenas that you then have to survive and build up to to get to that main event. Some of these different arena setups are considered prototypes, but some names like King of the Hill, Airbag Event, and Electric Rope Arenas were all shared, and they even shared some very interesting locations named Dark Zone, Warriors Quarters, Basement, Main Hall, Astrid's Office, Church, Metro Station, and the most interesting one being a place called Prison, which is actually not a prison at all. It's where gladiators house a large number of infected. But what are you most excited for? Do you believe this DLC is real? Do you like the whole gladiator theme? What would you want to see be added in? Personally, I want to see much more blueprints, way more ways to upgrade and diversify our player's loadout. I know people are interested in a transmog system and maybe along with that some badass cosmetic items, but personally, I'd rather have more ways to decapitate and maim my enemies than look cool doing it.